Over the last couple of weeks, I've been using a Samsung Galaxy Note 8 as my main phone. Today, I decided to talk about the specifications of the phone and review them to let people know if it is worth buying. This is the Galaxy Note 8 specs video. Hello everybody, my name is Matt and this is Real World Review. What I'm going to do is go over the specs of the phone and at the end, I will score the phone based on my personal experiences as a user and cell phone repairman. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section or on Twitter at Matt of RWR. Let's get started. To start, our first category is the outside hardware. Let's start with the display. The display is a 6.3 inch dual edge Super AMOLED screen with a resolution of 1440 by 2960, totaling 522 pixels per inch. The maximum screen brightness is super bright at over 1200 nits, which is extremely high for an AMOLED screen. With that said, benchmarks show a brightness of about 520 nits, which is still pretty high. There is Corning Gorilla Glass 5 covering that curved AMOLED display, making the front scratch resistant. The screen to body ratio is about 83% and has extremely thin bezels. The screen also has an 18 by 9 ratio, which has very mixed opinions. At least it doesn't have a notch. Let's talk about the rest of the front. We start at the top where the earpiece and the sensors are. There is a speaker grill that covers the earpiece, and to the right of that is an 8 megapixel front camera along with the iris scanner. To the left of that are the proximity and ambient light sensors, along with the infrared emitter. Like most Samsung phones nowadays, this phone lacks a front-facing microphone. On the bottom portion, there is just a black bar. That's it. Moving on to the frame. On the bottom, there is a USB-C 3.1 port, a microphone, four open ovals for the loudspeaker, a headset jack, and an S Pen. That's a lot. On the right side, there is a tiny power button. On the left side, there are the volume buttons and the Bigsby button. And on the top, there is a single hole for the microphone and a tray that holds a SIM card and memory card. On the back of the device, there are two 12 megapixel cameras that sit pretty much flush to the back of the phone, minus the little metal thing surrounding those sensors. To the right of that is a single LED flash unit, a heart rate monitor, and a fingerprint scanner. Under all of this is a slightly curved piece of glass. As for the size, the device is 162.5 millimeters tall, 74.8 millimeters wide, and 8.6 millimeters thick or 6.4 inches tall, 2.94 inches wide, and 0.34 inches thick. As for the weight, the Note 8 is 194 grams, or 6.84 ounces. The phone is water resistant, but it does not have a user removable battery or back. And now we move on to the cameras. There are two 12 megapixel sensors with a single LED flash unit and dual pixel autofocus. The right sensor is a wide angle lens at 77 degrees with an aperture of f1.7 and the pixel size is 1.4 micrometers. The left sensor is a telephoto lens with an aperture of f2.4 and the pixel size is 1 micrometer. The phone supports different camera features like dual optical image stabilization, raw image capture, hyperlapse, and 2 times optical zoom. The rear camera can record video in a couple of ways. You can record 4K at 30 frames per second, 1440 at 30 frames per second, 1080p at 30 or 60 frames per second, 720p at 30 frames per second, and slow motion video can be captured at 720p at 240 frames per second. Oddly enough, this phone allows for one-to-one -one capture at 1440p at 30 frames per second and 18.5 by 9 at 1080p. I wouldn't use either, but if that's what you're into, this is perfect. The front camera is an 8 megapixel sensor with the f1.7 aperture. It allows for a max of 1440p recording at 30 frames per second. This sensor is actually the same as the Galaxy S8 Plus, like exactly the same. The next category is the inside hardware. As usual, we start with the processor. The processor in this phone is a 64-bit Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 chip. It is a 10 nanometer octa-core processor with four cores running at 2.35 gigahertz and the other four cores running at 1.9 gigahertz. Geekbench gives the phone a score of around 1,824 for the single core and 6,537 for the multi-core test. The GPU is an Adreno 540 that runs at 710 MHz. When testing the GPU, Geekbench gives the phone a score of around 7,927. The phone has 6GB of LPDDR4 RAM, which is becoming pretty standard for larger flagship phones. The model I'm reviewing is the N950U, and it is T-Mobile based. The phone supports 1G, 2G, 3G, and 4G, assuming that the market you're in still supports those, along with LTE bands 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 12, 13, 18, 19, 20, 25, 26, 46, and 66. As for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi chip is at 802.11a, b, g, n, a, c, MIMO, and the Bluetooth is version 5.0. The phone also supports NFC, GPS, and GLONASS. 
The battery is a 3,300 milliamp lithium ion cell that is supposed to last all day. Samsung claims that the battery will give you up to 22 hours of talk time and up to 14 hours of internet usage. The phone does support Quick Charge 2.0 and there is also fast wireless charging support, assuming that you have both chargers. Oddly enough, Quick Charge 3.0 and 4.0 have been left out of this phone, even though the Snapdragon 835 devices are supposed to support 4.0. The phone comes out of the box with Android 7.1 Nougat and has been recently updated to Android 8.0 Oreo. Hopefully this phone gets updates for the next couple of years. Just know that the carrier based ones get them last. The phone supports a bunch of different audio formats like FLAC, MIDI, M4A, and WAV. As for video playback, the phone supports a few formats like MP4, WebM, and MKV. Now that we have gone over the specs, it's time for us to give this phone a score. Note that this phone comes with 64 gigabytes and can be purchased new for 740 to 960 US dollars, depending on your carrier preference. You can also find these phones with 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes of built-in memory, if that's what you need. Remember that this phone does take a micro SD card, but built-in storage is always faster. It should also be noted that this phone is about a year old and most people will want to buy this phone used, and the scoring does account for that. Let's start with the frame. The phone is made out of glass and metal. The front is mainly glass and the back is glass as well. Since the screen and the back are both curved, it makes it easier for this glass to break. With this said, it does make the phone look fantastic. Over the years, Samsung has been making curved phones easier to hold in the hand and this is no different. This design is similar to what Samsung was going with with the Note 7, which unfortunately was recalled and turned into the Note FE. In a way, I feel that the Note 8's design is the way that Samsung should have gone in the first place. I like this camera setup more than the Note 9's design, but I still think it was perfected on the S9 Plus. I just think that the Note 9's fingerprint sensor looks weird. With this said, the Note 8 has a sensor that is awkward to touch, so really you need to just rely on the face detection or iris scanning to access the phone with ease. I love the color design of the Note 7, and they brought it over to the Note 8 with the all black design, which I think is really amazing. As for bending, I haven't seen anyone bring in this phone bent, and you'll most likely break something if you do try and bend it. The Gorilla Glass 5 holds up well, but it isn't shatterproof for sure. Overall, I would say that the outside hardware gets an 8 out of 10. Next is the screen. As usual, AMOLED screens are my favorite, and this is no different. It is kind of weird for this screen to exist when we have similar screens on Galaxy S phones now. This screen is literally 0.1 inch bigger than the S8 Plus and the S9 Plus, and honestly, I can't even see a size difference. These screens do experience screen burn-in, but it's not as common as phones like the Galaxy S7 or the Galaxy Note 5. As always, Samsung makes the images look amazing, and on this Infinity screen, it looks even better. The screen rolls the image off, which looks cool, but I can't see myself using the edges to be more productive. You either like it or you don't. The screen size is definitely something to get used to, especially if you're coming from the 5.7 inch Note 5. Also, the 18 by 9 aspect ratio gives the phone more screen and less bezel. One thing I forgot to mention about these newer Samsung screens is that they get super bright when they know that they're in the sun, going over 1000 nits, and then dropping down to the 500s when it realizes it's not in direct sunlight. This makes the screen easier to see in the light and super bright in normal lighting situations. With this said, it did kind of hurt my eyes to look at this screen at full brightness. The display is a nice giant slab of AMOLED, so the screen gets a 9 out of 10. Next is the inside hardware. The Snapdragon 835 processor was the top of the line in 2017, but it is still an awesome processor in 2018. This phone is definitely fast, and surprisingly the software helps with that. With this said, it is kind of weird because it did lag in some situations where my S8 Plus normally wouldn't. The 3300mAh battery is large, but the performance is decent. It is smaller than what the Note 7 was supposed to have, which isn't too surprising, but still, I feel like Samsung could have put the S8 Plus's 3500mAh battery into the Note 8. Sure, you can get through the day, but the performance is noticeably worse than the Galaxy S8 Plus. The loudspeaker is decent, but lacking a stereo option. Not sure why they waited so long to add a second speaker, but the Note 9 fixes this issue. As for memory, 64GB is decent, but the addition of the SD card makes this phone perfect. The phone gets warm, which is expected, but it's not as bad as other Galaxy phones in its class. But I think I know why they did this. I'm still surprised that this phone does not support Quick Charge 3.0 or 4.0. It does, however, support power delivery up to about 12 to 15 watts. I believe the same can be said about the Galaxy S8, S8 Plus, S9, and S9 Plus. Lastly, I want to point out that the S Pen is a thing. Personally, just like the Edge panel, I found it to be very difficult to get used to, and honestly, I kind of forgot that it even exists. 
Still, it makes it a lot easier to edit pictures and text with the S Pen. There's actually a lot of stuff you can do with it now. It's kind of crazy. Also, it's pretty fun to push the end of the pen as well, especially if you're bored. And no, you can't shove this one into the phone upside down, because why would you do that in the first place? Also, that'd hurt. It'd be like stabbing into your thumb. Why would you... I, I don't know. Overall, I will give this phone a 7.75 out of 10 for the inside hardware. Next is the camera. As always on Samsung phones, the back camera is absolutely amazing. If you're used to the S7 or S8, you'll know how the standard sensor is. However, this one has two sensors, both with optical image stabilization and one with a telephoto sensor. The telephoto sensor gives you an option of two times optical zoom, which will definitely help in some situations. The front camera is a decent 8 megapixel sensor. It can also focus, which may not be huge for some, but it is interesting because iPhones don't do this. Just like any other Samsung phone, images look warm overall. During the day, images look amazing, just as you would expect them. Unfortunately, at night, they look a little bit more saturated at times, and the colors seem to blend into each other. Really, the performance is very similar to the S8 Plus, just with the added telephoto sensor. This gives the camera a slightly better score over the S8 Plus, so I will be giving it an 8.5 out of 10. Next is the software. The phone comes with Android 7.1 Nougat, and has been recently updated to Android 8.0 Oreo. I'm not a fan of TouchWiz, but the Oreo update definitely makes the user experience a little bit easier to use. Just like the S9 Plus, Samsung let off on the major customization. There are some things that I do love that Samsung puts in here, like the always-on display. With this said, there are probably some things in this phone that are only Note 8 exclusive, but they don't really stand out for me to bring them up. The nice thing is that Samsung leaves most of the stock Android features in this phone, so if you really wanted to, you can make this phone function like a Pixel device. There are some added features that the S Pen gives you, but again, I'm not the one to talk about because I don't really find it to be a necessity. The software never gets put into the scoring, but it'll still get a decent 8 out of 10. The last score is the future-proofing score. This phone has been out for over a year, and there haven't really been any major issues with this phone, which isn't a bad thing. The battery seems to be working fine, and I haven't heard of these batteries bloating or exploding. I've given up on Samsung adding the infrared blaster back into this phone, but they do give us some stuff that's actually pretty useful. The USB-C port on the bottom is USB 3.1, which doesn't mean much today, but in the future, it'll be beneficial. The Snapdragon 835 processor is a year old, but it still should be perfect for the next two to three years. The battery is concerning since the battery life isn't awesome already, and it will only get worse over time. The dual camera setup is a nice touch, and having optical image stabilization on both sensors and optical zoom means that the camera will be useful for a longer time than a normal lens setup. Overall, I would say that this phone is future-proof and gets a 7 out of 10. Add up the scores, and this phone gets a 40.25 out of 50 or 80.5%. This is an awesome upgrade over the Note 5 for obvious reasons, and I'm glad that Samsung is going into the right direction. It sucks that they had a multi-million dollar recall like the Note 7 did, but Samsung seemed to come back and make things a lot better. However, for obvious reasons, I'm still going to stick to my Galaxy S9 Plus. And that's it. Let me know what else you want me to review in the comments section below or on Twitter at Matt of RWR. And I have a question for you. Do you think that the fingerprint scanner is in a weird place? Let me know, and feel free to follow me on the social media listed above. Also, subscribe to my channel if you want to see the basics video of this phone. Every sub helps. Thanks for watching.